Hi and welcome to this video about XNA Pong, which is just a little thing I've coded in Visual Studio, uh, which I will share with me, um, so that you can check it out and perhaps do your own little version of XNA Pong. Uh, my first thought was to make a tutorial where I actually code it for you and you can follow me through uh, the tutorial, but I realized that it would actually take too much time, it would take something like a half an hour uh, to show you everything uh, and trying to explain it as I go. So basically I'll just let you check out the source code and I'll, uh, with this video, just talk you through a few of my design choices and uh, uh, at the same time here shamelessly show you my own little project called Neox the Space Wizard which you'll find uh, information about in on YouTube uh, if you just click more info to your right. Uh, I'll also show you an URL how to get here. Um, let's see, let's start by checking out Visual Studio. I have the XNA Pong uh, open here. And whenever you create an XNA Studio game, you'll get this uh, basic class uh, th that derives from the framework game. And it'll create a graphics device manager and a sprite patch for you at the start. And what I've done is actually quite, um, at least what I think, a quite a simple uh, build. I have this XNA Pong, uh, which basically keeps the whole game except for these entities. Uh, an entity is basically something on screen that has a texture, a position, and a, um, let's see, an acceleration, I think, yes. An entity is something that has a texture, position, acceleration, and can be drawn onto the screen. You just have to tell it to draw, and it will draw the texture it has to the position it has uh, without any sort of tinting of the color. So basically, we have uh, entities sort of like a player, and we have a puck. Uh, and uh, let's just start uh, checking. I'm not going to be very lengthy in this uh, tutorial. I'm just going to walk you through a bit of it uh, quickly. We have a texture that um, for the background, uh, just to have something nicer than just a black screen in the background. Uh, we have a puck, and we have two players. We have a left player and a right player. We also have uh, textures for all these in our content. We have a left player, it's just a blue little thing. And we have a right player, which is a red. Uh, and we have a puck, which is a yellow circle. Nothing all that fancy. And we have the background texture, which is quite large, actually. Uh, and that's it for the textures, and then we have a font, which is a sprite font. We just create these, uh, and it's uh, Arial 24, just to uh, write the score down and uh, the message in the beginning that you have to press enter to start the game. And that's that's basically it. I'm um, just going to show you a bit here. Um, we have a sprite font here that we save. Uh, random so we can generate some random values like the acceleration of the puck in the beginning it's either going to go left or right and um, what kind of controls we use uh, in this uh, I, I don't think I have done the Xbox controls uh, all that well in this example it's actually not used at all since I can't launch it through uh, Xbox at the moment um, so see this XNA Pong as a Windows version and we have a boolean that says if the game's started or not, and we can set the screen width and screen height. Uh, I have set it to quite low, uh, 320 times 240 because I'm uh, recording in 640 times 480. I set a few positions like vectors, so I can have a s shortcuts uh, like where's the center of the screen. I already have a, a vector that I can just uh, use, which uh, gives me the position of the center of the screen. It takes uh, half the screen width and half the screen height. Uh, and creates a new vector of it. Let's see. The constructor of the XNA Pong is basically just telling the back buffer that we have 640 times 480 or 300 times uh, 320 times 240, etc. So we basically just set the resolution of the game. And in its initialize function, we initialize the random random generator. We create a sort of start acceleration for the puck, and we initialize the puck by telling it what texture to use, and uh, where it starts off, which is the center of the screen, and what acceleration it has in the beginning. And we create uh, the left player and the right player. 
uh, the left player is player index 1 and the right player is player index 2 and we tell what kind of texture it has um, the left player uses the left player texture and the right player uses the right player texture and here's the positions that they start here's where I use uh, shortcuts we just say position start of left player which is determined up here it's depending on screen height and screen width that's why I have these shortcuts and it looks fancier at least I think so and what kind of acceleration they start with they don't start with any acceleration they're still uh, we load the content the background we load the texture background and the font which is the font's score which is that one and if we have any non-content manager content we need to unload we do it here but we don't have such so we don't really use that one and update here's where all the action happens so we'll actually leave that to the last little point when we draw uh, we clear the graphics device and we tell the sprite patch to begin we draw the texture and we if the game has started we draw the players and the puck since they're entities they have the draw function which I shown you earlier they use this draw function which just splits their texture onto the position that they currently have uh, and we keep track of the score and print it out on screen at the top center center top of screen and if we haven't started the game we need to just say hey press enter uh, until the game started is true then it not it will stop uh, showing this message and we end the sprite batch and we just call the basic uh, the draw function for our XNA framework game okay let's see about three minutes left so um, let's go through the update function a bit quickly here player movement we use the keyboard input all it does is check if you press escape it exits if you press enter game started is true if it does if it hasn't started already and uh, then we have the controls W and S for up and down for the acceleration of the left player and if you press D it will stop the acceleration at once uh, and uh, we have the same for player right except he has the up down and left keys you can change that if you don't like it you can just change the keys here so let's see that was player movement and let's scoring if the puck travels too much to the left and we take account to, uh, to the width of the texture of the game puck uh, it travels off screen by 10 uh, pixels the right player gets a score so he gets one more uh, point uh, and the game puck resets same thing with the left player if the puck goes to the right of the screen oh I missed this one as well if the game hasn't started we, we just uh, update um, the uh, XNA framework game and return at once instead of doing all these things when we actually don't have a game started already the acceleration at any time acceleration will always decrease by 5% we always decrease acceleration this is to get some sort of braking effect when you're not actually pressing any kind of button uh, the players will uh, de-accelerate uh, until they stop completely uh, every update we uh, translate the acceleration of the player uh, onto its position so we always add the acceleration to the position this is how we get movement at all we also have a break to stop um, if the acceleration is very small uh, we just set it to zero just to get a fully break uh, let's see the puck we just uh, update the puck's uh, position by copying the acceleration of the puck onto its position uh, we also handle the bounce uh, bounce uh, what do you say uh, logic which is basically if we're on the top of the screen we just change the uh, vertical acceleration uh, we reverse it so it starts going downwards same when it hits the bottom it starts going upwards just to reverse the acceleration and we have uh, we check if the game puck uh, intersects with the player if so it needs to change uh, the horizontal acceleration I just noticed my time is almost up here so you'll have to check out all these things for yourself and um, it's not much more left to say so uh, thanks for watching and I hope to check that you check out my game Neox as well <laughs>